Hey, what's up, Easy here. Welcome to my OBS guide. This video is directed towards first-time users, beginners, intermediate users. So I'm going to purposely avoid a handful of like the advanced options and menus. So if I do that, it was intentional. And I will cover how to set it up for local recording, set it up for streaming to Twitch or streaming to other services, and how to CPU encode, how to GPU encode, and the difference between the two, how you should determine which one you should use, and a handful of other things. So to get started, let's assume that you've never used the software before. Make sure that inside of this box down here inside of scenes that you right click add scene and make sure that you have at least one scene. Now inside of sources you want to right click and add and this is where it immediately starts getting confusing. So you have game capture, video capture device, I'm going to skip text image, image slideshow image, and we're going to do monitor capture and window capture. Now starting with game capture here just because it's, it's at the top is this is for exclusive full screen. So if you play your games in exclusive full screen you want to use this. And when you use this you want to double click it and make sure that the game is actually selected. And sometimes the game OBS can't hook into the game so if that's the case run OBS as admin and a way you can do that without having to do it manually every time is just find the exe file which is inside of the installation folder right click go to properties go to compatibility and then just check this box run this program as administrator so it runs as admin every single time you open it now for window capture this is the same concept except it only does windowed or borderless windowed so this will not do exclusive full screen and then game capture will not do windowed so usually people play the same thing all the time they all you know they play all their games in borderless or all their games in windowed or all their games in exclusive full screen but there are some games that don't have borderless and unless you use like a third party software you'll never run in borderless and then there's same some games that you know vice versa. So Windows the same concept once again double click it and make sure that the proper window is selected. Now monitor is it captures window and windowed borderless it does not capture exclusive full screen but it also captures your entire desktop so this will capture your gameplay and it will capture you tabbing out and going to a porn site. So it will also allow you to add multiple monitors so this is monitor one right here and then I have monitor 2 here that's not checked just like that and I can take and check this and then you can immediately see what's going on on my second screen over there so this is the second screen I'm not sure how that's gonna look on the finished video but this is the second screen and you can take and click edit scene and drag any of these windows like if you have your webcam or whatever on here you can drag these around and you know move them around to whatever and for the uh, monitor capture you can capture a subregion so if you only wanted to capture like half your screen you could do you know half your screen as well just like that by checking that box and setting the dimensions that you want now for a uh, video capture I need to pull this one over since this this is the one I'm recording with. It's kind of freaky, isn't it? So, video capture, you can check this, and this is your webcam. So there's the webcam, and you can just check that and turn that on, and you can check it, turn it back off, and you can check it, and you can turn it right back on again. So that's uh, as simple as it gets with the these these windows, just checking a a box basically. Now something to consider with these is you want to think of these as layers so if this uh, this is my webcam if I were to take and move this down and then move this down and I moved it below that window the full screen window it disappears so you want to make sure that your windowed captures are above your uh, full screen capture so that is uh, how you tweak that if you so wish. Now to get into the settings here I would recommend first I need to stop this preview I would recommend making uh, probably two profiles one for maybe three one for CPU encoding one for GPU encoding just to test the two out to see which one you like which one gives you better performance 
and then one for stream if you plan on streaming. So the first thing I'll get into is this is going to be for local recording. So this is for unlimited bitrate, high quality, you know, 60 FPS local recording. And first thing that you have to do is decide which type of uh, encoding you want to do. Do you want to do enco uh, CPU encoding or GPU encoding? And the difference between the two is as simple as if you check x264 that's CPU encoding that means that like all this load that you see right here on each each thread that is all from OBS like I have nothing else running it's all OBS is putting this load on there so this is uh, like 10% on a 12 thread CPU that means it will probably be about 20 to 25 percent maybe on like an i5 like if you just had a regular i5 so that I means that's a quarter of your CPU. So if you have, let's say, an i5 and you have a really like top tier GPU, like a 980 Ti or a Fury X or something, a 390X or something like that, then you might want to try this setting here. And this is, uh, for me, it's NVIDIA NVNC, and that stands for the NVIDIA encoder, and that is the H.264 hardware encoder chip that's built into the GPU. And for AMD, it has one as well to be called VCE, and I think it stands for Video Codec Engine. So if you have a, a high-end GPU, you might want to use GPU encoding over CPU encoding. Now, the difference between the two is it takes more bitrate to make a the same quality image using GPU encoding compared to CPU encoding. So more bitrate to make the same quality image using GPU encoding. So if you want max quality from your footage, CPU encoding is the way to go. But some people might be limited to, you know, using that setting simply because they don't have, you know, like a workstation processor or an i7, which is essentially what you need. You need like an i7, you know, quad core or the, you know, the six core or the eight core i7 to get away with using CPU encoding and it not killing your frames per second. Anybody can do it. It's just how much FPS do you want to lose doing it. So onward with uh, these settings. Uncheck CBR. That's constant bitrate. Set the quality balance to 10. That's as high as it goes. This number does not matter because whenever you check use custom buffer and you set the custom buffer to zero, that tells it to be unlimited bitrate. So this is unlimited bitrate settings, which is what you should use for local recording. For the audio, just set the audio to uh, whatever you want. I I don't really feel the need to do um, the extreme bit rates and everything. The AAC is uh, more lossless than MP3. I'm not sure if AAC is lossless or lossy, but basically uh, you set this stuff just to kind of match this to whatever your settings are. So that's uh, 48 you know, kilohertz. Therefore, this is 48 kilohertz, it's about as deep as that goes. So for broadcast settings, for local recording, you want to have this set to file output only, and then just set your file paths just like that. And if you want to use the um, like recapture my dank headshots moment type deal, you'd want to set this to the, the file path for this as well and name it something different. And you'd want to set this replay buffer length, set that up to you know really high to you know, whatever. You can see here that uh, how much it uses in your RAM. So if I were to take and set it to a thousand and ten seconds, it uses 32 megabytes out of my 32,000 megabytes of RAM. So you can just set that to whatever basically. And then for the video tab, this one's pretty straightforward. Basically just, you know, tell it Using this setting, the monitor capture down here, I have it set to monitor 1, so it kind of just auto-tunes the setting for you if you use it like that. But you can set it up to record you know, your second monitor or whatever. Um, tweak the resolution if you wanted to for downscaling. Audio, um, pretty self-explanatory stuff in the audio. Hotkeys, I set my start and stop to the same key so it works as a toggle sometimes also the start and the stop it does not work unless you're running as admin so another reason to be running as admin 
advanced. Make sure this is checked. Use uh, multi-threaded optimizations. Basically, all this comes as default. The CPU preset, I'm pretty sure I bumped that up a notch. So the lower this goes, slow equals insane CPU load. Like this will, there's, there's like not a CPU in the world that can run this on slower and actually game at a, you know, an enjoyable frames per second. So this will kill your CPU performance, basically. Um, so I recommend using this on ultra fast. And then for like 60 FPS and uh, recordings for local, set this to high. Make sure CFR is checked. That's constant frame rate. If you don't have that checked, it will make your video and audio become out of sync in things like Premiere Pro if you dropped even like a couple frames. And then for this box here, this is uh, like a custom setting. It says CRF equals 15, and there's no spaces in there. And this is this is telling this, like, how high quality do you want the footage. So, in my opinion, 15 at ultra fast is, like, really good quality. Like, it's, it's as good, like, if you put it next to lossless quality, other than, like, the color shift and the color fading that's notorious with... Um, you know, H.264, you couldn't tell the difference. Now, after you upload it to YouTube, YouTube's going to transcode it and thrash it and, you know, kill the quality even more. So there's no point in trying to get, like, the max quality out of all your, you know, recordings just because most of them are going to go to YouTube. YouTube's going to destroy it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, if you have, let's say you have an i5. i5, I would recommend putting this at 20 so that's where I'd have it with an i5. If you have a quad core i7, I'd probably start it at 20 and then creep, you know, jump down to 18 and then maybe make like a sample recording of each time you do this and then compare them side by side and see if you can even tell. If you can't tell, the higher numbers the better because it's the lower CPU load, which means that that's, you know, more headroom for you to get like FPS in games, especially CPU intensive and dependent games. So You'll have to tweak that setting just a little bit, or you can leave it unchecked altogether. Um, it comes unchecked by default. So we have the uh, quick sync encoder, and I think I might have skipped over this up here in this encoding tab. This is grayed out of mine because I don't have a, an onboard graphics in my CPU. That's for the integrated graphics, and you can actually use this to encode with. So if you use that to encode with, you'll need to tweak these settings, and I can't really tell you how to do this because... I don't have one. I can tell you CBR stands for constant bitrate and VBR stands for variable bitrate. And in general, variable bitrate is better than constant bitrate. So probably be using that if you do use this uh, setting. The, micro uh, the microphone noise gate is uh, just like if you have a hiss or a buzz in your mic, you can set these sliders to where like, you know, if my mic is, you know, louder than this, then, you know, come on if my mic is not louder than this you know decibel threshold then turn it off completely and then the attack time most likely you want to leave that at uh, a one and that's kind of like the fade off so like a one millisecond attack time is you know instant drop just drops it instantly as soon as you stop talking and then the hold time is how long it you know in be in between you like saying words so it's not just weird sounding basically which you'll have to adjust those to your own personal preference that's kind of based on like how fast you talk and stuff and then scene switcher I uh, don't know don't know anything about that sorry I can't help you with that obviously it's not important because I've used OBS for two years and never needed it but um, don't know anything about that now to let's talk about the stream settings so for the stream settings Back into encoding, your settings should look something like this. And once again, I'm using CPU encoding. If you choose to use GPU encoding, you can expect a lower quality stream. Um, but maybe you prefer a lower quality stream because it gives you better FPS and you're playing competitively. I don't know. Personal preference there. You want to use a CBR, constant bitrate, and you want to have CBR padding checked and then have custom buffer size checked. And this custom buffer size should be anywhere from 75% to 100% of this number. And this number is your basically your upload bitrate in kilobits. So if you go to Google and go to a speed test and you get your upload, you know, bandwidth capabilities, that's probably going to give it to you in megabits. So this 
1700 kilobits is 1.7 megabits so add three zeros past a decimal and that's what it is in megabits so you in general want like four to five megabit upload to stream at like 1080 without having a lot of like blocky artifacts and stuff this right here mine is like limited to 2200 because I live in America and I don't want to donate my kidney to get a quote gaming package so I basically can't stream because of that because to get streaming bandwidth here is just it's ridiculous so 1700 that's where you're at sorry but your streams gonna look like crap and then you can squeeze out a little bit of a bandwidth by lowering the bitrate of the audio as well and for broadcast settings this changes drastically instead of file output will be on live stream now and then you can uh, select your service here and I will show you how to do this with twitch for twitch um, select whichever server is closest to you this will be where you relay to and for your stream key you'll need to make sure that you're uh, logged into twitch and just go to your dashboard and on your dashboard you should have a tab that says stream key and you can check the click this button right here that says show key and it'll give you a long like um, random letters and numbers you know alphanumeric string copy and paste that into here never give that to anybody by the way and you can I think all the rest of stuff is default just stuff that's checked not checked in 10 and then for the file path this is for like if you wanted to you know locally record while you are streaming you would set this stuff as well for video this becomes useful for streaming because of this uh, down sampling so like the down the downscaling is if you are playing at 1920 but your bandwidth sucks and you can you have enough bandwidth to like make a 720p stream look good but not 1080 but you want to play in 1080 and not 720 this is what you do here you just set this to 720 or if you're in 4k and you want to downsample to 1080 same thing and then here's just kind of like a little subsection um, visual tweak for that and um, obviously like it says best detail that's the best detail but you'll you know tweak that to your own liking then you can set your FPS as well inside your audio that's the, the same deal here um, nothing changed there um, hotkeys nothing changed there if you if you need to set up hotkeys that's where you do it in advance this is a little bit different make sure that the encoding profile is set to main and that is for compatibility for like mobile users and stuff this is the decoding process to decode your stream and if you set this to high it will most likely work on everybody's PC you know 99.9% .9 of the population that has a PC and is watching your stream on a PC but if somebody's watching your stream on a phone or a tablet or something and it's set to high they might not be able to watch it or it'll stutter or whatever trying to decode the stream so make sure that's on main for streaming um, ultra fast here as well highly recommend that and this is unchecked this time so that I'm not using that for the stream settings I forget the exact reason why but uh, not using that for the stream settings and that is going to wrap everything up so if you learned something from the video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more thanks for watching peace